Warning, this video and all other videos on this channel are for entertainment purposes only. The content of this video and all other videos on this channel are the opinions of the creator only and do not constitute legal, trading, investment, or financial advice of any kind. Investing carries a high level of risk and the majority of retail clients lose money. Do not invest in capital unless you understand the risk and you are prepared to lose it all. Yeah. All right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and this is the weekend's deep dive. On the weekend, I like to come back and check in on the base case hypothesis and make sure everything is still going roughly speaking according to plan so without further ado so far we've been working with the expectation that at the lows everyone was too bearish and we we're going to run to all-time highs and then have a big recession and a big bear market for the stock market likely we would see rate cuts happen around the time of the top and for bitcoin the idea was pretty simple we were going to have a blow off top a left translated cycle meaning the top comes before november of this year and thus spend the remainder of the four year cycle in an extended bear market decline spanning significantly more than the 12 month bear markets we're used to seeing for bitcoin the stock market is more or less operating within the expectations we seem to be on our way to setting a new all-time high a new blow-off top angle and we expect the base case hypothesis to continue to play out and thus I expect to see a significant technical breakdown, a bear market in the not too distant future and I expect rate cuts will be showing up sometime around September which will likely mark the top within a couple of months of the onset of that cutting cycle. Bitcoin has been a little bit of a problem child, it hasn't gone quite as smoothly as the stock market. We did a really good job at calling the acceleration up to all-time highs before the halving, but since then we have spent longer than I anticipated in this consolidation. So far, I'm still operating under the assumption that there is one final push left in this bull market for Bitcoin, and I still expect, roughly speaking, that top to form around November. Now, whether or not it actually left translates and forms before November, or whether it's slightly right translated is to be determined, but I am still, largely speaking, until invalidated, expecting this thing to continue to push to the upside and top significantly before most people are anticipating which would be the end of next year so until such time as this thing waddles out of here or breaks down violently then i continue to accept this as still very much in play i still expect to see one final push to the upside and then like i said a bit earlier I expect this bear market to span closer to 24 months than 12 months, which historically has been typical for Bitcoin. So I expect this long and drawn out bear market to occur. As always, I'm open to all possible outcomes and we will continue to take this thing one day at a time. Something that has been plaguing me for a long time is I have been wondering if we're going to see a repeat after we see an all time high for the stock market of one of these lost decades. You can see here we went 16 years in consolidation we did 16 years here again we did another 14 years of consolidation 14 years of consolidation which begs the question to me once we see this blow off top and the high come in are we actually going to remain in what is considered to be a lost decade for another 10 or so years whilst the oscillator resets just like it did in all the prior instances so if this is going to continue to play out and we are indeed going to see this blow off top to all-time highs that culminates in a bear market and a global recession i do wonder if the highs will actually ultimately remain the highs for many many years to come in the stock market in terms of the macro backdrop we've been expecting that anything you do to the m2 rate of change shows up in the cpi albeit with around a 12 to 18 month lag i've been making the case over and over again that this current period of perceived sticky inflation is not actually sticky and that what we are seeing is this sideways wobble in m2 or the rate of change of m2 i should say fool investors into thinking that inflation was sticky and i've been making the case over and over again that this next leg down has yet to present in the cpi and thus the fed is very very late to cut and therefore i continue to expect cpi and inflation to come off rapidly ahead of these rate cuts we've also been using the tmc global credit impulse which leads cpi by about 18 months this has also been telling us to expect continuation of disinflation before ultimately even slipping into a short-term period of asset price deflation which i would think would be largely catalyzed by a top in the stock market we had the pce data come out on friday and the headline pce came in at 2.5 percent which is right in line with expectations and the prior readout we also had on a month over month basis 0.2 again right in line with the forecast so not too bad but not super cold either the us core pce came in at 2.5 percent below the 2.7 forecast and below the 2.6 percent from the prior readout and the core pce month over month came in right around 0.2%. So ultimately, the trend is still more or less moving in the right direction. Of course, it is the following CPI print, the upcoming CPI print, that should show the bulk of the move. And if I am right in my assessment that this move right here is going to present in the CPI, then this is the upcoming CPI print that it should start to show in. 
it's of note the PCE metric is significantly less volatile than the CPI. It tends to ping around a lot less, and that is why the Fed prefers to use this as its inflation metric. We also had a bunch of other macro data released. The GDP numbers seem to be okay. So, so far, at least based on the GDP metric, no sign of a slowdown or recession just yet. We also had the jobless claims come in not too hot. Again, telling us we might have a little bit more space in this Goldilocks zone to see the final push to all-time highs in the stock market and in Bitcoin as well. Notice how PCE prices Q over Q was down significantly beyond the prior readout, okay? 3.4% previous, and we had 2.5%. Again, fitting in with this thesis that this portion of the M2 rate of change is yet to show up in the inflation data, and core PCE Q over Q was 2.8%, which is, again, significantly below 3.7%. So once again, I sit here and tell you, I don't think inflation is as sticky as most people would have you believe. We got more weird macro data. I kind of say this as a joke this week, but NVIDIA came out and they beat EPS and revenue expectations. In the week, we were kind of joking about how this is becoming a macroeconomic event since it makes up so much of the indexes. And despite the initial jobless claims not looking too bad, Okay, under the hood, white collar jobs are showing recessionary tendencies, as you can see right here. Okay, every other time in history that we have seen this kind of rapid decline, we have indeed found ourselves in recessions in every other instance. So will this time be different? I highly doubt it personally. Not to mention we've got a SAM recession rule that has triggered. A lot of people have been suggesting that this time doesn't count because Sam came out and said this time isn't representative. This is not something I personally subscribe to. It's not something I personally believe. And in white here, we've got the unemployment rate continuing to spike just like it did in all prior instances that were indeed synonymous with recessions. On top of that, we've got the orange, which is the conference board survey where we ask consumers whether they think jobs are plentiful and easy to get at the moment or whether they're hard to get and few and far between. More and more of them of late are suggesting that jobs are not plentiful and they are harder to get, which is why we see this big orange spike at the hard right edge. Again, when we look back in history, all of these were synonymous with recessions. So we continue to see labor market deterioration. And again, I believe the market in aggregate is kind of wrong about this because a lot of people are making the argument that the unemployment rate increase at the moment is not currently being driven by layoffs. And thus, we don't have to worry about recessions too much. However, in all past recessions, they all started with labor force expansion, and then usually only about two quarters into the actual recession, the layoffs rise sharply. And we can see that here, okay? So is this time different? I highly doubt it personally. And there's been a lot of debate recently about whether or not the rate cuts will be bullish for the stock market or whether they will have bearish implications. The key tell here is if we are cutting rates into a slowdown, then the stock market does not react favorably to that at all. And at the moment, We've got these rate cuts about to be showing up with a highly inverted yield curve. Every other time we've seen that, we have indeed seen a recession, which tells me again to be open to seeing the second part of this hypothesis come to fruition and that we will indeed be having a bear market and a recession. Another key indicator here is that this 10-2 yield curve is now reverting back above the zero line. So a lot of people get this wrong. A lot of people think as soon as the yield curve inverts, we have to start calling recessions or be worrying about one showing up in about 12 to 18 months time. But it is the cross back above. It is the reversion back above the zero line that actually triggers recessions. As you can see in all prior instances, whenever we got that, we did indeed enter a recession. And so every time we see an inverted yield curve paired with a flattening Fed funds rate, the US economy is heading into a recession. And that is exactly where we are today. This time, instead of the 10-2 yield curve, we've got the 10-year, three-month yield spread. Again, this is not a good sign in terms of avoiding recessions in the not-too-distant future. And the bond market continues to now price in a hard landing and a recession, as you can see at the hard right edge here, significantly below the recession threshold. Once again, I am here to suggest that we are probably going to be in a recession before too long. So with the onset of a Fed cutting cycle expected around the 18th of September, the Fed funds rate here in blue is likely to start to move to the downside. And if that is the case, it begs the question, what happens to the stock market? Do we get one final push to the upside and then a big bear market to ensue amongst a global recession, just like we had in the prior occurrences? I think that is still the base case for me. I see no reason to step away from this, particularly with the stock market continuing to set its third and final blow off top angle. And of course, one of the biggest pushbacks to this is that liquidity is still early in its cycle. Liquidity is going to continue to increase but remember, we saw this before in the GFC. Liquidity was increasing the entire time and it did not prevent a bear market or a recession. So is this time going to be different? I don't think so personally. 
So overall, largely speaking, things still seem to be going roughly according to the base case hypothesis. There are one or two curveballs, perhaps potentially starting to present. One would be the GDP data for the US. That certainly came in indicative of some strength. And the other curveball, of course, is Bitcoin. Bitcoin has spent far too long in this consolidation for my liking personally. So that is something I want to focus on. I certainly want to be paying a lot of attention to the next CPI print making sure that really is cold and making sure that I can continue to stand with this posture that the Fed is indeed far too late to cut. I haven't included any charts today because by the time you see this, I will be away with my wife. Monday is, of course, a bank holiday for the stock market, though, so I will ensure that I put out the TA section ahead of market open on Tuesday. And if you're a Level 3 member, look out for the members only video that is going to be posted for you guys on Sunday. As ever, we'll keep taking it one day at a time, no bias, no emotions, and we will continue to posture long and strong across the board until the market proves us otherwise. I'm your boy Camel, I hope you have a great weekend. Until next time, take care from me, all the best, cheers, bye.